Hello everyone. My presentation is on performance-based funding. Will it work? During the 1990s, many states adopted new forms of performance-based accountability, which included performance-based budgeting, funding, or reporting. As a result, public higher education has increasingly been required to explain, defend, and validate its value and performance to a wide variety of constituents, including governors, legislators, students, parents, employers, and taxpayers. The current wave of performance-based funding is quite different from that of the 90s. State higher education leaders have begun to link calls for additional funding to increased accountability and increased efficiency of operations. One of the main differences between performance-based funding then and now is the change in the focus from meeting the needs of, the, of higher education to meeting the needs of students, the state, and its economy. In the first part of the 21st century, funding formulas for public higher education have undergone a radical change. State after state has shifted its funding formulas from the old methods to a wave of formulas that examine the need for public resources for colleges and universities in a fundamentally different way. Representatives from state universities, community colleges, and under legislative directive have collaborated to create an outcomes-based funding model that our Texas legislature is currently reviewing. This model calls for a 10% of undergraduate institutional funding to be allocated based on a rolling three-year average of post-secondary completions and other student outcome metrics. State-level state funding formulas have been based on student enrollment counts on the 10th day of college called Census Day, on which the federal and state governments fund money to colleges and universities. When students later in their semesters drop out, taxpayers lose more than half a billion dollars at four-year universities. These models include reducing and increasing intensity to degree, measuring and paying for performance, block scheduling to assist working students, implementing guided pathways for success. A number of states have incorporated performance-based funding in their higher education systems. These four states have some of the best approaches. Indiana's performance funding formula has evolved since 2003 to prioritize overall degree completion, on-time completion, the success of at-risk students, and the production of credentials uh, that support Indiana's economy. Ohio has utilized performance funding since 2008 and in 2012 made changes to strengthen it. The Governor and the Ohio Higher Education Funding Commission have outlined plans to tie 100 percent of state appropriations to student progress and success by 2015, thus ending all allocations based on enrollment. Tennessee has implemented the most aggressive performance-based funding model with 100% of state higher education funding allocation. The state introduced performance funding with the Complete College Tennessee Act of 2010. Performance measures include student retention, degree attainment, and completion of remedial courses. Uh, Texas is looking at aligning formula funding to the mission of the institution, performance funding to recognize achievement in meeting student success goals, and also funding on outcomes outside the formula using up to 10% of the undergraduate formula funding. Texas strategies for boosting college completion include degree completion, student success, innovating remediation, remediation, time and intensity, and full time, which equals 15 semester hours to finish. The next milestone needs to be decided by the state legislature in improving recommendations determined by the advisory board. The expected outcomes would be to adopt some of these recommendations of in integrating performance-based funding. Texas is behind in closing the gaps by 2015 and by adopting some of the recommendations suggested by the advisory board, Texas just might be able to close most of these gaps by 2015. 